One of the nine free cities, Pentos was founded by Valerians as a trading outpost. Though some claim it actually existed before then, and the original population decided to pay homage to the freehold. With either origin, with Pentos being so close to the water, it's not surprising the first Pentoshi were merchants, seafarers, traders, and farmers. As time went on, this trading post grew into a large port city more populous than Astapor, as they absorbed lands from the Little Rhoyne to the Velvet Hills to the sea. Their expansion included obtaining the ancient land and original homeland of the Andals, Andalos. As there were few of high birth amongst the first Pentoshi, they were less interested or protective of their Valerian blood, and more willing to breed with the occupants of the lands they took over as they grew. Because of this uncaring to breed with the original inhabitants of lands they took control of, current day Pentoshi have a lot of Andal blood in them. This high concentration of Andal blood makes them the closest cousins of the men of the Seven Kingdoms. However, the Seven Kingdoms and Pentos aren't just close due to blood, but also due to proximity. Pentos is the nearest free city to King's Landing, and because of this closeness, trading ships pass back and forth between the two cities almost daily. Their closeness in blood and location doesn't mean they're exactly the same, though. Pentos is a daughter of Valeria, and the old blood can be found in its people, who to this day still speak bastard Valerian. This Valerian blood gave rise to customs very different than the Seven Kingdoms. In the old days, Pentos was ruled by a prince of noble and high birth, much like Dorne after Nymeria's arrival, who was chosen from the adult males of the so-called Forty Families. Once a prince was selected from these families, he would rule for life. When a prince died, they would choose another, almost always from a different family. The prince controlled Pentos for some time, but as the centuries went on, the prince's power decreased as the power of the city magisters who picked him grew. In current Pentos, this council of magisters rules the city, and the prince is more of a ceremonial presence, though he still has plenty of perks, such as being carried around, with plenty of guards from place to place. Now in the city, the prince has two main tasks. First, he's expected to preside over feasts and balls. Second, each new year, the prince is required to participate in an ancient ritual, thought to have come from the pre-Valerian Pentos, that ensures the continued prosperity of Pentos at sea and on land. In this ritual, the prince must deflower two maidens, the maid of the fields and the maid of the sea. This is where things get a little risky for the Prince of Pentos. If a war is lost or a famine occurs, the prince is held responsible. The people of Pentos will slit the prince's throat in a sacrifice in order to appease the gods and bring back their good fortune. Then they'd choose another prince to bring back the prosperity to their city. If that prince didn't do the trick, they would rinse and repeat slit his throat in a sacrifice, and choose a new prince. During one war between Pentos and Bravos, the battles were going so poorly that four princes were elected and sacrificed in a single year. Given the lack of job security, plenty of nobles of Pentos don't want to be selected for the job of being a prince, and some have outright refused to take the position. The tattered prince is an example of one of these refusals. As a young man, he was selected by the magisters of Pentos to become the next prince. The previous one had been executed in 262 when there was a long drought, and the tattered prince thought, yeah, no, fled the city, and never returned. He sold his sword to make a living, fought battles in the disputed land before founding a new free company, the Windblown. Besides the crazy sacrificing of princes, Pentos is a beautiful place with kind people, some of whom dye oil and fork their beards, that are generous to those that please them and are lovers of song. However, wealth does equal power in the city, and the poorer populations struggle to survive. Those without wealth in the city mostly become performers that train as tumblers or singers, for multiple generations to perfect their art. But the city itself is impressive, with massive walls, tons of bazaars, roofing of tiles, the Sunrise Gate that allows travelers to exit the city to the east towards the Rhoyne, walled estates, a large red temple where the faith of Rylor is practiced, and many square brick towers. The square brick towers are controlled by spice traders of Pentos, who send their ships to far off locations to trade for peppers and saffron. But I want to go back to early Pentos. Pentos mostly enjoyed having no wars, after they stopped expanding, until the Doom of Valeria in 114 BC that destroyed the Valerian Freehold. This led to the Century of Blood, where a power vacuum was created from the now-gone Freehold. Volantis, one of the mightiest of the nine free cities and the first daughter of Valeria, 
claimed they should rule Valeria's empire and began their conquest of Essos. Pentos joined up with Tyrosh towards the end to resist Volantis, and eventually they invited the Lord of Dragonstone, Aegon Targaryen, to Pentos to aid them in their fight. Lord Aegon agreed and helped them fight against Volantis. After the threat of Volantis was gone and Aegon Targaryen conquered and founded the Seven Kingdoms, well, six, but that makes no difference in what his title was, Pentos continued to have a relationship with House Targaryen. Prince Maegor, Maegor the Cruel, was exiled to Pentos in 39 AC by his brother, King Aenys I. He was brought back by his mother, Visenya, after Aenys I died, but his second wife remained in Pentos for some time. A Pentoshi woman, Tyana, came with Maegor's wife from Pentos and became King Maegor's third wife. Later, in 115 AC, Prince Daemon Targaryen what a woman, his brother, King Viserys I, wouldn't be too pleased with. So Daemon left the Seven Kingdoms with his wife to Pentos. In the city, the Prince of Pentos entertained them. Though the Prince of Pentos putting on the charms for Daemon Targaryen also had to do with the growing triarchy, the Alliance of Myr, Lys, and Tyrosh. Pentos feared a war coming with the ever more powerful triarchy, and Daemon had been fighting against them for some time, so schmoozing up to him had benefits. Daemon and his wife traveled throughout Essos, but came back to Pentos when his wife became pregnant. They remained as a guest of a Pentoshi magister where their twin girls were born in 116 AC. Six months after their birth, Daemon, his wife, and children returned to Driftmark. A little later in 129 AC, the Dance of the Dragons broke out where Aegon and Rhaenyra Targaryen, half-siblings, fought for control of the throne. Rhaenyra had married Daemon Targaryen, and it was decided their two children, Aegon and Viserys, would be fostered with the Prince of Pentos until Rhaenyra took the Iron Throne. The two boys took the Pentoshi cog, Gay Abandon, in 129 AC, but the ship was attacked by the opposing side and never made it to Pentos. After the Dance of the Dragons ended, Pentos joined up with Bravos and Lorath to take down the Triarchy. The biggest blow to Pentos came in the two centuries before the time of the books. Given Pentos was founded by Valerians, it should be no surprise that slavery was practiced in Pentos for much of its history, and Pentoshi ships played a large and active role in the slave trade. This was all fine and well for some time. Well, maybe not for the actual slaves. Before Bravos started to get all worked up. Their northern neighbor, Bravos was formed by a fleet of escaped slaves who risked their lives for freedom. The founders of Bravos swore that no one in their city would ever be a thrall, bondsman, or slave. So they found particular offense in Pentos dealing in the slave market. For over 200 years, six wars were fought between the two cities over slavery. There was also waters and rich lands between the two that certainly helped the war begin, but it was mostly about slavery. Four of the six wars ended with the Bravosi winning and the Pentoshi forced to submit. As I talked about with the princes earlier in this video, this is when it was really, really bad to be a prince. The last war between the two cities occurred 91 years ago where Pentos was just beat to the ground. The last war went so bad, four princes were sacrificed in a year, and it was only the fifth chosen prince who stopped the further bloodshed. Rumored to use bribes, this prince convinced the magisters of Pentos to sue for peace after a rare victory. Both cities agreed to peace, but part of the terms limited Pentos in many ways. First, Pentos was limited to no more than 20 warships. Secondly, Bravos took away their ability to hire sellswords, have an army be on the city watch, or enter into contracts with free companies. These terms have made Pentos one of the most vulnerable of the free cities. Because of this, the magisters of the city mostly placate and pacify the Dothraki and other free cities. They have even made delicate friendships with calls, giving them many gifts and gold if they keep their Kalsars away from their city. But the biggest concession under the peace terms between the two cities involved Pentos getting rid of slavery and never participating in the slave trade again. And the people of Pentos have mostly held to their word. Mostly. There are many Pentoshi ships that will magically have a different banner up when the ship is found to have slaves on board. And in the city, there are tens of thousands of free bond servants who are collared and branded and basically slaves in all but name. These free bond servants are harshly disciplined, but they are free men and women allowed to refuse service. That is, refuse service if they aren't in debt to their master, which almost all of them are. The cost of clothing, lodge, and food provided by their masters is almost always worth more than the value of their labor. The more they work under their master, the more debt they obtain. So that is the city of Pentos. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video, subscribe, and come back for more videos every week.